10 players was asked to give our views on the Danny Garcia vs Rod Sulka fight. And we've gotta send out a 10 players holler to Jay Cruz on this one. We know you've all heard about it, and know the story. So look. We're gonna get right into this shit and not fuck around. It's a fucking bullshit fight. Okay we're not gonna end the video yet. But this easily could have been the shortest video we've ever done. You know that shit Jay. That's why you mentioned mixing it up. You've got a good production mind too by the way. But we're gonna stick with talking Garcia Sulka in this one. Now all serious fight fans already know the deal. Danny Garcia's fighting a guy named Rod Sulka. And we know the fight game's about two steps away from becoming the WWE. Faking in the ring is the next step then openly admitting. Yeah. We fake it in the ring. Currently Garcia's fighting a guy who hasn't earned the right to a title shot. And Garcia's saying shit like. Yeah. I just gotta go in there. And show him why I'm the best. Now that's cool. Danny should be saying that. Just not against a guy ranked number 7000. And not even ranked that in your division. But Danny says he's gotta show him why he's the best. As though Rod the Beast Sulka was all over the place destroying guys while calling out Danny non-stop. He can say that shit if he wants, but don't expect fans to take you seriously. Say that shit against this guy. Or this guy. Or this guy. Or this guy. Or this guy again. Yeah. Now in all fairness, we've said this before. Danny's been in with some live dogs, and we can understand taking a breather fight. Which he thought Herrera was gonna be. But since he wasn't. We can only assume he said. Hey Al. That Herrera guy wasn't a breather. You promised me a breather. So they decided to pick a guy that would make Danny look real good. Yeah. Too fucking cheap. But as y'all know. This fight won't be for the title. Teddy Atlas stepped in and played a massive role in making sure this fight wasn't for the title. Props to Teddy on this shit. Because he keeps shit true. But in all honesty. We disagree with that decision. Or at least partially. Look. Don't promise a man something then take it away. Fuck that Indian giver shit. And for those that don't know. It's not the Indians that were taking back what they were giving. Because some people get that saying twisted. But if you're gonna do the Polycreed Rocky Balboa hand picking shit. Then do it all the way. Simply make sure it's never done again. Don't promise the man a shot then take it back. That's not how players roll. Simply make sure all belt holders can only fight guys with a certain ranking from here on in. But as we see it. If by some chance Rod Sulka beats Danny's ass. His name will boom. But he has no title. And Danny can have his next title defense if he loses, but no one'll see him as the champ. Plain and simple. Lots of fans are already viewing it that way from the Herrera fight. Which is who Danny should actually be fighting. Not one fan or opponent will respect his straps if he loses. Slim as it may be, give the man a prize in case he lands a puncher's chance bomb. Or hits and moves enough to get lucky. One of these guys will take it from him anyway. The next question is this. If Rod Sulk is ranked number 70 something. Then what'll he be ranked if he kicks Danny's ass? Does he take Danny's spot in the rankings? Because if he does, then why not just be a damn title shot? We all know he won't. But fuck it. We still say give the guy the title lottery shot. And boxing should simply make sure it's a one-time deal that never happens again. That's our view. If you make a deal, stick with it. If it's a bad deal, then never make it again. We learn from our mistakes in life. And that's how. But when it comes to Danny. We have no problem with a breather fight. But this new breed of bullshit commercial fighters kind of fucks with us. Rankings are like grades. And when Danny says he's the best, he's saying he's an elite college level fighter. And that's what you are when you hold real belts. And a college fighter fighting a fourth grader isn't impressive. That's what Rod Sulka is when it comes to the grade rankings. And quite a few fight fans are hoping Rod does some overtime studying and skips a few grades then shocks the world. That's not good for Danny. We can understand a breather fight. But at least face a high school level motherfucker. We just hope Danny doesn't walk in the ring showing off belts. K.
Kill that noise. Just fight. Because that's kind of meaningless if you're gonna walk away with them even if you get knocked the fuck out. And Danny's saying shit like. They're gonna see the fire in me. I got something to prove. Come August 9th, I'm gonna show the world. Like what the fuck is Danny talking about? Show the world what? That Herrera didn't beat you. I mean that's the kind of shit you say when you're facing a guy ranked number one. Not 1000. Ultimately, it's as much of a bullshit fight to us as it is to everyone else. We're getting on Mayweather about Maidana, but at least Floyd's rematching against a guy in a fight people questioned. Danny's not. But the fight's on, and it is what it is. But his next fight better be against one of these guys. Because you're hogging belts now keeping them away from quality opponents. And what Danny's doing is the very reason we have so many problems with belts today. And the only thing it's gonna do is cause more belts to be created. Ultimately making belts completely irrelevant. You wanna know when the belts were most powerful. When a motherfucker walked in the ring with one. Now they walk in with a ton. And it means nothing. Look. There's a serious misunderstanding fight fans have today when it comes to old school and modern day fighters. They run this tune-up fight stuff today. Yeah. It's a tune-up fight. Well we have no problem with that. No fighter fought beasts in every fight. But to rationalize their shit, they claim old school fighters fought guys with lots of losses. Look. Lots of those old school guys with lots of losses actually had better records than dumb new school non-historian fight fans think. If 10 of the top guys fight each other. 5 are gonna lose. This shit ain't rocket science. When top guys keep fighting the top guys, there'll be more losses. It's that simple. Or they could have simply avoided each other like fighters do today. And keep bloated bullshit records. Two known names got together and fought in those days. Not to mention the fact that there were less divisions. Guys like Danny had to fight guys at 147. There wasn't a weight division gate protecting him from those guys. He'd have to fight guys like Porter, Thurman, and Bradley. Oh yeah. We know. The Cold War. They didn't have shit like that protecting them either. Then they try to compare these guys to old school fighters. But today. They've got that extra protection. Along with managers, that wanna milk the cow until it's unmilkable. So fans see a lot of guys they think are the best when they're not. Danny got to his spot by fighting high ranked opponents. Now he's trying to keep that spot by fighting low ranked ones. And this shit is seriously reminding us of some kind of fucking zombie vampire movie. I mean we keep seeing fighters we like. Guys who seek fights with the best. Then suddenly they turn. And start stepping in against a bunch of bums. It's something past greats never did. It's like they sat down with someone who planted a viral infection in them. And for some strange reason. They've all got the same so called manager. <laughs>